Hey everybody, Q Paul here. Welcome to the channel. You know, I do videos for people at different skill levels of Spanish. This video is going to be for you folks who are just starting out. You know, you're starting to, you know, get your feet wet a little bit in Spanish. You're learning about the gender of words, things like that. And right away, you've probably already noticed all these verb conjugations. And maybe you even started learning them and it seems like you're studying all the time, but you're not getting a lot for it. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you seven great sentence starters that I typically teach any student that I tutor to get you talking right away. I call these plug and play phrases because you're going to be able to take these and just plug in verbs in the infinitive. That's the unconjugated form. Like when you see them in the dictionary and you see all those conjugations, you won't have to worry about that. You take it in the infinitive, you drop it right into this and you can make a sentence. That's why these are fantastic. I'm going to go through these formulas first and then we'll start popping in those infinitives, all right? First one on our list is quiero plus infinitive. Now remember, infinitive is the unconjugated form of the verb. I put it this way because I want you to think of it as a formula. And you won't think, do I have to conjugate that other verb? No, you're just gonna plug it in. Quiero plus infinitive means I wanna do something. Next one, tengo que plus infinitive. I have to do something. Next one, puedo plus infinitive. I can do something. Now, this is the one actually you're probably going to use the most as a question. In order to do that, all you're going to do is put an upside down question mark at the beginning, a regular question mark at the end, and change your inflection. Next one on the list is yo debería plus infinitive. I should do something. Now that yo is in parentheses, and I'm going to explain why a little later on, okay? Next one on our list is yo podría plus infinitive. I could do something. Next one on our list is voy a plus infinitive. I'm going to do something. And the last one on the list is acabo de plus infinitive. I just did something. Now that one's actually in the present tense. The verbs conjugate in the present tense, but we're going to be talking about something in the past tense. That makes that a super useful construction, right? So these are the only ones we're going to be working with today. Now all we need is a verb in the infinitive to pop in there, right? So I'm going to go ahead and give you one, a really common one, and that is comer, to eat. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our formulas and all we do is pop in that infinitive. We don't have to change a thing. Quiero comer. I want to eat. Tengo que comer. I have to eat. Puedo comer. I can eat. But as you can see, it probably makes more sense asking, right? Puedo comer. Can I eat? Upside down question mark at the beginning. Regular question mark after. Change your inflection to a question sound, just like English. ¿Puedo comer? Can I eat? Next one. Yo debería comer. I should eat. Yo podría comer. I could eat. Acabo de comer. I just ate. You see how useful that last one can be? It's in the present tense, but look, we can make a sentence about something we just did. I just ate. Now it's your turn. I'm actually going to leave these plug and play phrases on the screen and I'm going to give you another infinitive to play with. And here it is. Dormir, to sleep. Dormir. Now you translate, all right? You can look at it. It's okay. Take a look. I want to sleep. Quiero dormir. I have to sleep. Tengo que dormir. Now you should be saying these out loud, all right? Not just in your head. You're like, no, say them out loud, all right? It helps. I can sleep. Puedo dormir. Can I sleep? Puedo dormir? Same one, right? You're just changing your inflection, right? Pretty easy. I should sleep. Yo debería dormir. I could sleep. Yo podría dormir. I'm going to sleep. Voy a dormir. I just slept. Acabo de dormir. So it's not that tough, right? Once you learn these sentence starters and you see new vocabulary, you can just pop it in. Now, what I recommend is that you actually practice this in the same order all the time because that's kind of a memory trick. You know, if you can't think of one and you thought the one before it, you're like, okay, I know what the next one is. It's kind of like learning your ABCs, all right? Once you get good at them, well, then you can move them around and put them in different orders. 
Now I'm going to be talking about those yo's in parentheses, okay? Yo is I in Spanish, but you don't see it at the beginning of all of the sentences. That's something that is very confusing for us English speakers because, you know, we always have the subject mentioned in every sentence. I, you, he, she, somebody is in there. Well, that doesn't have to happen in Spanish. You see, in Spanish, you can actually drop the subject if it's very clear from the verb conjugation or the context who the verb is referring to. And I know that may sound a little confusing at first, okay? You're, you'll get used to that. What I'm saying here is that these sentences could have been written with the yo in there. And this is what they're going to look like. Take a look at the screen. And they wouldn't be wrong, okay? But that's not how native speakers speak. Typically, you're going to see that yo go away when it's very clear that's who the verb refers to. And when we're talking about verbs in the present tense in Spanish, that conjugation is unique to the first person. If a Spanish speaker sees yo quiero, they translate it as I want. If they just see quiero, they translate it as I want. Because that verb can't belong to anyone else. Here's an example. I'm taking this from wordreference.com. The verb we're actually using here, the infinitive is querer, to want. So here are the conjugations in the present tense of this verb. There's the one I just taught you right up there in front, quiero. Take a look at the other ones down. You don't see quiero, right? So there's never any, you know, misunderstanding what I'm talking about. They're never like, oh, did you mean he, she, us? No, you never get that wrong. Now take a look at the other ones that I talked about that have yo in the parentheses. We have yo debería and yo podría. Now I could just say debería and podría, but I put that yo in there. Why? Well, the reason is these are not in the present tense. They're in the conditional tense. And in the conditional tense, the first and third persons share the exact same conjugation. I'll show you what I mean. This is from the verb deber, okay? That's the verb we're using here. And that can be like to ought to do something or must do something. I cover that in other videos. It can be a really fun verb to work with. A little confusing for some folks, but it can be fun. Anyway, let's take a look at it in the conditional. Here's our first person with yo. Debería, right? Now drop down to number three. Debería. There it is again. See, it's not clear just from the conjugation alone that I'm talking about I. That's why, to be clear, I may have to mention yo. Now, from the context of the you know, conversation, it's very clear I'm talking about myself. I don't have to use it. I can drop it as long as it's clear. And, you know, as a beginning Spanish student, I recommend that you learn it as yo debería and yo podría because of that reason. When you get her better at Spanish, you want to drop that yo, go ahead. But otherwise, you may just say, you know, debería comer. And they may be like, who should eat? Should, are you talking about me? Are you talking about Joe? You? Who, who should eat? You weren't very clear there, Paul. But if I said, yo debería comer, I should eat. It's time for you to translate some more with a new verb, okay? The verb we're going to be playing with is estudiar, to study, because that's what you're going to need to do, is do some studying, right? So here we have it. Ready? Go. I want to study. Quiero estudiar. I have to study. Tengo que estudiar. Can I study? Puedo estudiar? See, we jumped right to the question one on that one. I didn't throw you off, did I? Good. I should study. Yo debería estudiar. I could study. Yo podría estudiar. I'm going to study. Voy a estudiar. Don't forget that little A ah in there. Sometimes it gets eaten up, you know, by the other vowels, but, you know, if you're writing it, make sure it's there and try to remember it's there. All right. And our last one, I just studied. Acabo de estudiar. Acabo de estudiar. Man, I love patterns. You know, patterns make it easier to learn a language. You learn the pattern, you repeat the pattern, you're speaking the language. So you can play with these all day, you know, looking up different verbs, just learning the infinitive and plugging them into your formulas. Now, sometimes when you look up a verb, you may have a say ending on it, all right? And you're going to be like, hmm, what's that? Okay, for example, dormirse. That means to fall asleep. 
That verb probably sounds familiar because we just covered dormir, which means to sleep, like the act of sleeping. Well, dormirse means to fall asleep. So these verbs that end in se in the infinitive are called pronominal verbs. All right, you'll hear me talk about pronominal verbs in other videos. So sometimes you're looking up these pronominal verbs. How are we going to play with these? Well, one thing about pronominal verbs is that se is going to change to match who we're talking about. Now, in our examples, we're always talking about I, right? So we're going to be changing them all to me, M-E. Let's take a look at what that looks like in some examples, right? Let's take the verb we already talked about, dormirse, that means to fall asleep. I want to fall asleep. Quiero dormirme. See, the se change to me. That's it. Super simple. We're still popping in our infinitives. We're just making that small change. I have to fall asleep. Tengo que dormirme. Can I fall asleep? Puedo dormirme? Now you try one. I should fall asleep. Yo debería dormirme. Got it? I could fall asleep. Yo podría dormirme. I'm going to fall asleep. Voy a dormirme. I just fell asleep. Acabo de dormirme. Of course, if you're asleep, I don't know how you're saying that. Maybe you're talking in your sleep, all right? They're just examples, folks. You know, don't overthink them. Let's go ahead and stick with our whole sleeping theme, and I'm going to give you another pronominal verb that's very common in Spanish. Acostarse. Acostarse. And it means to lie down or to go to bed. Like in English, when you say, oh, I'm going to go to bed, we would use acostarse. How about this? Ready? I want to go to bed. Quiero acostarme. I have to go to bed. Tengo que acostarme. I can go to bed. Puedo acostarme. And as a question, can I go to bed? Puedo acostarme? Same thing, right? Just change the inflection a little bit. I should go to bed. Yo debería acostarme. I could go to bed. Yo podría acostarme. I'm going to go to bed. Voy a acostarme. You hear that, that ah kind of get eaten up by that other one? If you really slowed it down, you would be like, voy a acostarme. But when it kind of blends together, it's like, voy a acostarme. It just kind of went together. But you know it's there, right? I just went to bed, or I just laid down, whichever one you like. Acabo de acostarme. Man, piece of cake, right? Now, we're sleeping, you know, we're laying down. What about when we're going to get up, okay? And not wake up, to get up. Because you can wake up and lay there for a long time. My wife does that, keeps hitting snooze, kind of lays there. To actually get up is going to be levantarse, levantarse. I want to get up. Quiero levantarme. I have to get up. Tengo que levantarme. I can get up. Puedo levantarme. I should get up. Yo debería levantarme. I could get up. Yo podría levantarme. I'm going to get up. Voy a levantarme. I just got up. Acabo de levantarme. I think you got it, right? You got this stuff down pat. Recently, I started creating these little worksheets to go with some of my videos, and they just contain more exercises that you can work through, you know, to practice whatever I'm talking about. You'll find a link to uh, the worksheet for this particular video in the description section of the video. Um, I'll also pin it to the top of the comment section. Well, that's it for the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, just do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. And until next time, hasta luego.